Hello trend miners and welcome to another episode of Tutorial Thursdays. This week we're going to look at how to build your own asset framework or AF in Trendminer. If you remember from the first week we set up our OE tracking system and a couple of people raised some questions on hey can you spend a bit more time on how to create that in Trendminer? So that's what we're going to do this week. I'm not going to spend too much time just a couple of minutes on the what and the why of an asset framework or an AF. Uh, if you want to find out more, I will leave some links and uh, assets in the description that you can uh, re-watch some recent virtual instructor-led trainings, some webinars to find out more. But just to kind of quickly recap, what is an asset framework? Conceptually, if you think about it, it's almost like a tree. You have a, a solid trunk, which would be the, the plant itself, for example, and that will break down in a number of branches. Those branches could represent individual unit operations which then further split up into pieces of equipment or assets and then finally the final element the leaves of that tree those will be the sensors that you want to link up so the temperatures the pressures and the flows and so on that allows you to build a more human friendly way of representing your plant no need to remember those complex tag names fic one two three four five um, all you have to do is basically navigate through that tree and find the sensors that you're looking for now, why should you bother building this? Because I'm not going to lie, it takes a little bit of effort to create such an asset framework, especially if you want to cover the whole plant. Well, there's a number of reasons, and I already mentioned one, which is being able to find your tags of interest more easily. You don't have to remember those tag names, those code names. You can just easily navigate through the tree and have confidence that you'll find what you're looking for. But there's a number of other reasons, more high value reasons that I want to mention as well. For example, it will allow you to templatize your assets. You may have different pumps, different valves, different reactors of the same type. And by capturing them in an asset tree, it's going to be easier to compare apples to apples because you can compare reactor one very easily to reactor two and reactor three. You don't have to repeat workflows or calculations. You can basically just uh, reuse what you've uh, built before. Finally, another advantage is that you're going to be able to scale up your analytics workflows faster Again, you don't have to repeat work, you don't have to repeat steps. You can basically just, for example, come up with some good search conditions on one asset and then repeat those as a cross asset value based search, for example, on others. So it's also going to be a way for you to really scale up your analytics workflows. All right. That being said, let's dive in and create an asset framework today live in Trendminer. First of all, let's have a look at what we're going to set up. Today, we're going to set up a number of autoclaves three of them that will each have the same components or the same attributes such as temperature, pressure, and a couple of uh, other tags such as progress, the activity, and the phase we're currently in. We're going to do that through the import capabilities of Trendminer to import your asset framework into Context Hub. And then we're going to show you how that looks like finally in Trendminer itself. That being said, let's dive in and open our Trendminer. As you can see, I've already opened some tags. They're called TMAUT here for Autoclave. Those are the tags we're going to include into our asset framework so that we finally can navigate through that tree in Trendminer. Let's jump over to Context Hub. I already had the tab open, but you can also very easily go into your module switcher and go to Context Hub. Now for the next step, you do need to be an admin. If you're not an admin, you can still prepare the file and then ask your admin to, to actually upload it into Context Hub. So we'll navigate over to the configuration screen. So let's start by downloading our example file and let's open that file up in Excel so that we can start editing. There we go. So we're going to remove the information that was in here and let's just start over, right? So we're first going to create a new directory. We're going to call it tutorial Thursdays. That's going to be our root node basically the main element that we're going to put the autoclaves under. And this is going to be an asset. Let's call this tutorial Thursdays. Then as a next step, let's add our three assets. So we're going to start off with tutorial Thursdays, autoclave one, name is going to be autoclave one as well. And let's copy paste this a couple of times for autoclaves two and three. Let's hit save and just to uh, make sure we're on the right track, I can always import this to see if uh, there are no errors so far. So to do so, and you notice this uh, completed successfully. Now I'm at least sure that those first four rows are good and I can continue from here. 
The next step, we're going to populate that first autoclave with the four attributes, the four sensors that we're going to connect. So we had temperature, we had pressure, we had the phase, and we have the tag indicating activity. These will all be attributes, so I'll mark them as such. And I also have to fill in their name, temperature, pressure, phase, and active. All right. Now, there is one important element because we already imported um, our file before, which means the first elements will now have an idea. To make sure those get, uh, those get updated, I will download the current configuration. I will open this up in Excel as well. And that file will look like this. So it's going to look very similar to the file we're using for importing, but now some IDs will be filled in. This is basically Trendminer's way of recognizing what asset we're working on. So if you want to come back later and update that particular asset, maybe rename it, uh, change the, the structure itself, the description, the template, etc. Um, you would do this through this ID. So I'm going to copy paste these ideas now in place and we'll add them into our import file. And this is important, otherwise I would, I would overwrite what I had already created or potentially would throw me an error. So those four ideas I'll retain and I will continue from here. And as a next step, I have to indicate what tags I'm referring to. So for the temperature, this would be TMAUT TI0101. Let me quickly verify that this is correct indeed. And I'll go back into Excel. We'll add the pressure as well, PI0101. Then the phase will be TMAUT AO3.AO1.phase. And then finally, dot .active. Again, I can now verify that at least this first uh, autoclave is mapped correctly. I will go back into Context Hub and I will select the file I have just created and after waiting for a second or two, you notice indeed again that this import was successful, so my first autoclave was mapped correctly. I'm going to work in the same way to add autoclaves 2 and 3 to my asset framework or AF as well. Again, I'm going to first download the current existing structure because I'm going to need those ideas and put them over into my import file. Again, I'm going to copy paste that in Excel. So the structure now looks like this. I will copy over the elements that I need. So it's going to be these four and I will paste that into my import file. For autoclaves two and three, it's going to be very, very similar. So I'm going to copy paste this twice and use Excel's replace function to replace autoclave one with autoclave two, replace them. And I'm going to do the same thing for autoclave number three. There we go. Now, of course, I do have to correctly map the tags as well. So for autoclave two, it's going to be TI0201 and then AO2 for phase and activity. And now for autoclave number three, it's going to be similar ti 301 PI-0301, and then A03. There we go. If I now save this file and I import it again into Trendminer, we'll be done for today. So import assets structure, give it a few seconds and complete it. So now I've successfully mapped three components, three assets, and all of their attributes in Trendminer. The way to confirm that this now works in Trendminer is, for example, to go back into TrendHub and let's look for our autoclaves. And you notice when I search autoclave, I indeed find my autoclave one, two, three inside of my asset hierarchy. If you don't see this asset browser yet, just go into the settings options and make sure in feature management that your asset browser is actually turned on. Again, this is an admin only action. So if you don't have access yourself to the settings bar, just reach out to one of your admins and they can uh, set this up for you. Coming back to the advantages of the AF, very easy navigation. So I'm going to go into Tutorial Thursdays and I will look for the temperature of Autoclave 3. All I have to do is follow the menu. And as you can see, I had already visualized this tag. It was already on my screen. That's why it's marked with a green checkbox. Let's say I want to add the activity tag to it. I can go and do so directly from the asset browser. 
Now, the nice thing is when I add text through the asset browser, it's going to show me also those uh, names that I used. So those human readable names that are easier to remember, but it's going to show me the reference to the tag as well. So I get the best of both worlds, basically. Now, all I've done so far is I've set up the navigation, but I also want to use some templates to tell Trendminer that those are actually autoclaves. And if I want to compare operation between them, the Trendminer knows uh, that these are the same type of assets. So one last time, I'm going to go back into Context Hub and I'm going to download the current configuration that I had successfully imported. And that's going to be this file right here. Now, as you can see, this file is actually ready to be re-imported. So that's a nice thing. You can basically extract the current configuration out of Trendminer, make the additions, maybe add a few lines or add a few rows, make your changes and then re-import that file. So you don't have to always start from scratch. Uh, but what I want to do is tell Trendminer that we're working with an autoclave in all three cases. So I'm going to create a template called autoclave to mark all three uh, as, as being such an item. After marking the autoclaves as um, the autoclave template, I also have to mark the individual attributes as belonging to that template. So I'm going to assign each of these to their own type of template. Copy paste this a couple of times and then re-import this into Trendminer. For the final time, we'll wait for the green check mark, all completed. If I now go into TrendHub, I can set up a view that contains, for example, the temperature of each autoclave. So I'm going to use that asset browser to quickly navigate through my elements. Very, very handy, as you can see. And enlarging my view a little bit, I notice that I have a temperature for each of those three autoclaves. If I want to uh, investigate, for example, how many peaks each of them has had over the last week or so that I'm looking at, what I would do is I would go into the search dimensions, select the cross asset value based search, indicate that I'm going to search through autoclaves, and I have the option to select which of these reactors I want to search through. So if I only want to look at one and two, for example, autoclave one and two, I can select only one and two, but I, in this case, I'm going to look at all three and I'm going to look for temperatures. Again, these are these conditions mapped to those, uh, to those templates I had created before. And I'm going to search for periods where this is higher than 100 for at least two minutes. And when I hit search after a couple of seconds there, you notice that I find my results. In this case, it's very similar. Each reactor has about 130 events over the last uh, week or so of data that I have available. This is a very quick and easy way to see if there's any kind of discrepancy. Maybe one reactor has way many more excursions than the other one. Cross asset value based search is a very quick way to confirm that. All right, there we have it. In about 10 to 15 minutes, we've created our first AF with three autoclaves and four attributes for each of them. You've already seen how easy it was to use these attributes and that tree-like structure to navigate through and find the tags of interest. We've also gone one step further and used the templates to create a cross-asset value-based search. That's going to really be powerful if you have many of the same assets, many of the same type of assets uh, that you want to search through. That's all we have for you today. If you have any questions, any follow-up questions, please let us know. Drop us a comment below. And as mentioned in the beginning, we'll leave you some, uh, some interesting links where you'll find more information.